My name is uh, Will Pinchik. I'm a courseware developer for Juniper Networks, and I'm going to talk about configuring bidirectional forwarding t detection (BFD) specifically for RSVP signaled MPLS LSPs. So we'll start with a BFD overview, and then we'll do a quick demonstration on configuring BFD uh, for MPLS LSPs. Okay. So first off. Um, you should be familiar coming into this uh, learning byte with bidirectional forwarding detection. Um, its base specification is defined in RFC 5880, and uh, specifically for MPLS LSPs, there's an RFC uh, 5884 that talks about BFD for LSPs. So you should be familiar with uh, the fact that a system uh, takes either an active or a passive role, the active uh, and, and the active role is the one in which a system uh, will uh, initiate uh, the exchange of BFD control packets. Uh, and uh, we should know that a BFD session is uh, between, uh, between two systems, uh, two systems that are configured for BFD. And, um, you know, each, if I have two systems, it is possible to have multiple sessions between them. Uh, for instance, if I have multiple MPLS LSPs between them. So for each BFD session, um, each system will generate a discriminator for the session. So, so a session will be represented by two discriminators that are locally generated by each system. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll, I'll show you an example here in the next few slides to talk about the use of the discriminators. And then each session begins with a slow periodic transmission of BFD control packets. Once bidirectional communication is achieved, the session is determined to be up by both sides. If no control packets are received from a neighbor in a calculated detection time, the session is declared down. And this gets down into the millisecond level. So it is possible to detect a neighbor uh, uh, going down in the millisecond range. Um, so, um, and we'll show you how to configure uh, these uh, uh, periodic trans the the transmission time as well as when you detect a neighbor to be down. There's four states of a session. It's either init, as the, that uh, occurs when a session is uh, attempting to come up. Uh, there's the up state when there's full bidirectional communication. There's the down state. That's when uh, communication is lost between. Uh, uh, the neighbors, and then there's admin down, which is, uh, you know, can be manually done at either end. Okay, so uh, here we talk about specifically uh, uh, BFD for MP RSVP signaled LSPs. So it's used to, uh, again, to perform uh, LSP fault detection to detect when an LSP has gone down. So here we have an LSP built from the ingress router R1 all the way over to R4. We see the labels that are assigned to each link for this particular LSP. Here we see the um, how LSP pings are being used on the on the ingress router to bootstrap the BFD session. So here, when R1 wants to establish a session with R4, a BFD session with R4 for this L MPLS LSP. It will encapsulate in an MPLS header, and this is showing you the packet that's on this link uh, with the MPLS label of, uh, of 10,000. Okay, there's the MPLS header. It, encapsulate, it encapsulates an MPLS echo request packet, uh, and the MPLS echo uh, MPLS pings are defined in RFC 4379. So that, again, this is used to bootstrap this session. So it sends this ping, this echo request to R4 across the LSP. The uh, echo request will have a source address of R1. It'll have a destination address of 127.001. It'll use a UDP port of 3503, and it'll also contain R1's BFD local discriminator for this particular LSP. Because when it gets to R4, it won't have any label information. 
right, because of the label 3 here. So it is going to be this local discriminator that's going to allow R4 to say, oh, this is for a particular um, LSP. Okay. R4 will then respond with <clears throat> its uh, with a BFD controls packet in the reverse direction, notice no MPLS encapsulation. So in the reverse direction, there's no MPLS encapsulation. It has a source address of R4. It has a destination address of R1. uses a UDP port of 3784. And it has both R1 and R4's uh, discriminator for this BFD session. Okay. Okay. Then, going forward... BFD control packets are then transmitted from R1 to R4 over the MPLS LSP, okay? Has the source address of R1, a destination address of 127.0.0.1 in these control packets, a, a UDP destination port of 3784, and it contains R1 and R4's BFD discriminator, okay? So now R2 should respond with its own control packets, okay? So by default, um, R1 would send uh, control packets every 50 milliseconds, okay, and um, R R4 would do the same, okay, every 50 milliseconds with some sort of jitter, okay, between them. And if either one of them detects that it's uh, not receiving BFD packets by default three times that transmission timer, so it would be at about 150 milliseconds, it would detect that neighbor to be down, okay. Okay, now, BFD alone only checks the data plane, okay? Uh, checks the state of the LSP's data plane. It doesn't check the control plane. So along with BFD, whenever we turn on BFD, uh, we automatically turn on a periodic set of LSP pings. By default, it's every 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, R1 will send an MPLS ping across this RSVP signal MPLS LSP to R4 just to check the, uh, um, verify the control plane against the data plane. So it's just one extra level of checking, okay? Okay. So next we'll do a uh, demonstration on BFD. So notice that if I go back a slide, that we have R1 and R4. R1's the ingress, R4 is the egress. What I want you to notice first, if I go to R4, so I'll bring up R4 here, here's R4. If I say sh uh, show protocols um, MPLS, we'll see here, just ignore this inactive LSP, but all I've got configured is the interfaces, uh, the MPLS interfaces, okay? So nothing special is configured there. If I say run show version, okay, I see I have a... Um, I'm using 12.3 R.2.5. Now watch this. If I say run show BFD session, I see here that I have a session. This is R1's address. I'm on R4 right now. The state of this BFD session is up. Here's my transmit interval, and my detect time is three times the transmit interval. The multiplier is, is, is what you use to determine when your neighbor is down. Three time, or multiplier times the transmit interval represents when you expect to receive some sort of packets from the remote side, okay? So I do have one that's up. So the real interesting stuff happens on R1, so let me bring that over here. So here's R1, okay? And if I say uh, show, uh, notice I have protocols in, in PLS. I've got a label switch path from R1 to R4. I've turned on M PLS on my interfaces, and I've turned on uh, OAM for this M for MPLS. Now, I could configure this this hierarchy directly under the label switch path if I want to, but here I did it globally, which means it would apply to all label switch paths applied to it. Okay. Here I've set for this label switch path. I've said uh, I have to to turn on BFD at a minimum. I have to do this: specify a minimum interval. The default interval, and you're going to see this. Because uh, notice on R4, I didn't configure anything, so it's got a minimum interval set of 50 milliseconds. Here, I just went ahead and set it to 300 milliseconds, okay? And that's how often I will uh, send, uh, transmit 
uh, uh, BFD packets. Um, I've also set the LSP ping interval to 30 seconds. Uh, the default interval is 60 seconds. If I say uh, run show MPLS LSP, I see here that I have an LSP up built from R1 to R4. Uh, R1 to R4 is the name of it. It's up. If I say run show BFD session, okay, I see that I have a session with this ends up being R4. It's up. Um, here's the interface it goes out of, and here's the negotiated transmit interval and multiplier for this session, which results in a detect time of 900 milliseconds. Okay, so one session, one client. Now, if I look at that same command and say extensive, here I'll see that uh, same information here on this line. Nothing's nothing's changed here. We do see. Um, uh, let's see here. We have the we we can see the local and remote transmit interval. So notice that the remote side, which is R4, tried to negotiate 50 milliseconds uh, uh, tr transmit and receive and a multiplier of three. On this local router R1, we said 300 milliseconds. So it's always the slowest rate, which would be uh, you know a transmit interval of 300 milliseconds. Every 300 milliseconds is slower than every 50 milliseconds, so um, it, it was uh, negotiated to the slowest transmit and receive interval. Also, we see the discriminators that were negotiated as well. Okay, so we've got a, a session that's up. So if I go here and let's look again at the configuration, sh sh uh, show again. I've got this these settings for OAM, so let's do that again. Uh, let's let's see what some of my settings are. Set OAM, and then under BFD, I can specify uh, some uh, my detection time uh, details, my transmit interval details, the version of BFD I want to use. Our default is version one. Uh, we can specify our multiplier we want to use. Uh, the one thing I want to point out is our failure action. Now, by default, when a failure occurs between two uh, BFD neighbors, the only thing that happens is the uh, is that the event, the failure event, is simply logged. Uh, nothing actually um, happens to the LSP itself, but there is a log under um, under var log messages. If you want there to be an action, you can specify a failure action, and there's a couple. Okay, one is teardown. Okay, and this one's a little bit more dangerous. So if it is possible that BFD could detect a, um, a session going down before RSVP realizes it, okay, and um, and that would cause you to um, uh, the BFD to bring the LSP down and bring up a new one. That would be the teardown. It's dangerous because what if you had fast reroute uh, turned on? Wouldn't it be nice if you could leave the session up, notice it quicker? Uh, R1 would notice it quicker because of the BFD failure and then have it make a new LSP before breaking. That's what make before break is. Have it leave the LSP up hoping that fast reroute or link protection saves it, um, saves the traffic that's ongoing, and then um, build a new LSP. Basically, BFD, when using make before break, will allow you to detect a failure along the path um, before R1 receives the uh, the uh, path is it path error message from the uh, uh, from from the downstream neighbors. So um, so those are your options there. But by default, we only log. You can have it tear down immediately once it detects it, or you can do a make before break. Um, if I say make before break, um, you can specify a tear down timeout, which is how long you're going to wait before that. A uh, new LSP comes up before you um, finally give up and just tear it down. And that's it for uh, BFD for RSVP signal LSPs. I hope uh, I hope uh, it uh, if you find it useful. Talk to you soon. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology-specific training paths. 
Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.